All right. After a short break, we will start four point three expected values. Okay. Actually, the expected values is just the weighted average. Okay, weighted average, but in the probability, we we call the expectation. Okay, we use the terminology expectation. So we have already started. X is a discrete random variable, right? The capital letter X is a discrete random variable. RV means random variable, and we know the probability when the Capital X equals a small letter, small letter X. That is the PMF, right? Probability mass functions. And we have already checked the cumulative one, right? We also checked the CDF. The CDF for discrete random variables is the stepwise function, right? Stepwise function. Now, now what is the? How can we calculate? How can we calculate the expected value or expectation for the random variable x? We denote it. We denote it as e, okay, which means the, the capital letter e, okay, capital letter e, expectation of the random variables. That is called the expectation, okay, expectation. If we are given the formula, you should be able to calculate the expectation. Then we are done in this section. So the expectation is calculated in this way. What does this summation mean? That means the x, okay? This x, this small x is the value we take for the random variable x. So it's the x times the times its PMF. This small x means the value we take. The value we take then times its corresponding probability. For example, when your when your random variable takes one, so it should be one times its probability when the random variable equals one, and then take the sum of all the possible values of the x. Okay, take the sum of all those. So this means you take the product term first. You take the product term for each one, and then take the sum. Okay, take the sum. If we give the specific example, it's easy to calculate it. Okay, if everyone is able to calculate the expectation, then we are done in this section. So we can interpret it. We can interpret the expect expected value of the random variable as the weighted average. It's also average. Okay, especially especially if the probability, all of them are the same. All of them are the same. Then, then it's the average. Actually, it's the average. Okay. So the expected value of the random variable is the weighted average of the possible all the possible values for the random variable can take. Okay. Now let's check some examples. Okay. Let's check some examples. So expectation for random variable for the random variable that means you will let you can write xi let me just write xi xi is the specific value xi times its corresponding pmf right the corresponding pmf and then take the sum of all those possible values for the random variable xi Times the PMF when the random variable equals xi, and then take the summation for all the xi. So let's read. Repeat this example. Okay, repeat this example. So that is the example one we discussed in the second section. So the PMF of x. Okay, PM of f of x are those right let me write it when x according to this bar according to this bar when the random variable equal to zero the probability is one fourth when the random variable equals to one the probability is one half right one half and when the random variable equals to two the probability is one fourth again of course, the summation of all those all those PMF equals one. No problem. This is one fourth, one half, one fourth. No problem, right? 
no problem. So, so what is the expectation for the random variable x? And here, so that means my xi, you can write your xi is 0, 1, 2, right? So that means, that means when x, so this is my xi. This letter is my xi, right? So that will be 0 times the probability when the random variable equal to 0. And then what is my xi here? That is 1. So that will be 1 times the PMF. And then what is this probability? That is when the xi is 2, so it will be 2, right? So you figure out each xi, right? That means here x1 is 0, x2 is 1, x3 is 2, right? According to the formula here, x1 is 0, x2 is 1, x3 is 2. So that will be x1 times the PMF when the random variable equals to x1. And then plus x2 times the PMF when the random variable equals x2 plus, plus x3 times the PMF when the random variable equals to the x3. Right? Trying to understand those notation. Okay, capital X is always the random variable. Now let's take the expectation. Right? Of course, the first term is zero. Right? Zero times the probability. Then one times one half plus two times one fourth, which is one. Right? Which is one. So we can also understand. We can also understand for this one that is x i. Right? Xi times the corresponding PMF. Horizontal times vertical. Don't make it in that way, okay? Don't make it in that way. Horizontal times vertical or vertical times horizontal. We are doing probability subject, okay? We are not only doing the number calculations. You are college level students. We don't want just your final answer as one, okay? If you always write your answer as numbers, there is no detail explaining, there is no PMF mentioned for the discrete random variable. It's wrong, okay? It's wrong. That means you are not study, you are not study probability. You are doing number calculations as a high school level. Make sense? As I always mentioned, for the probability class, the, the calculation is not the major part. Okay, trying to understand what is the PMF, what is the random variable equals to a specific value. Trying to understand those concepts and those formulas. We, I didn't write, I didn't write the expectation equals vertical value times the horizontal value. Okay, xi times its PMF when the random variable equals to xi. Right? And then we take all those i. How many i I have? I starting from one to three. Right? That is not the example, okay? Not the example to do number calculations. So here, how can I summarize the expectation for this example? Here, right? Expectation. My x1, x2, x3 are listed here. And I have three, right? I have three. So that means each each values the random variable can take times the corresponding probability of PMF, then take the sum of those terms, right? And we know that the discrete random variables, they have the finite number, right? A countable number of the possible values. So we can take the, this summation, right? We can take this summation. Example two, find the expectation where x is the outcome when we roll a fair die. When we roll a fair die, so we are going to get six numbers, right? This one is very easy, okay? This one is very easy. So what is the, so x is the outcome. x is the number you get. x is the outcome means x is the number you get when you're rolling a die. So x can be all the numbers from one, two, three until six, right? 
one x equal to one, one x equal to two. What is the probability for each one? What is the probability for each one? No one answer my question. One over six, right? Or you can write it in this way. When the x equals, let me just keep my x. No need to write x i, just i, right? Just i. The random variable equals to i. PMF is one over six, right? PMF is one over six, and the i is starting from one, two, three, until six, right? Then what is the expectation? So right now, right now, the PMF for each one is one over six, right? So when the when the when the i equals one. X equal one, the probability is one over six, right? So you can do like this one, okay? You can do like this one. Let me write the summation first, then we do the number calculations. So that will be I, that is the number showing, right? I times its PMF when the random variable equals I. And what is my I? My I starting from one to, to six, right? So that will be one times one over six plus two times one over six, right? Plus plus six times one over six, right? It's like that. Or you can do one plus two plus until six. So what is the final answer? Seven over two, right? Seven over two. Uh, times one over six. Times one over six, sorry. Times one over six. So it's seven over two. And here, here you will notice that this is just the example the outcomes with equally likely outcome, right? This is the equal probability. Make sense? This example is equal probability. Then, then what is the expectation? For the equal probability, this one just means the average, right? This one just means the average. Check it, one, two, one plus two plus three plus six over six, right? That is just the average. If the probability, if it's unequal probability, then unequal probability, the PMF, okay? So for the PMF, let me write as a table, it will be more clear, okay? It will be more clear. So we can understand from this example, if it's equal probability, that is pretty easy, okay? That is pretty easy. So for the PMF and the expectation, if it's equal probability for each values of the random variables, like here, each number you get, one, two, three, until six. All the probability are the same, one over six. So in this one, actually, it's a average, right? It's a average. If we have the unequal probability, then we are called weighted average. That is what does the expectation mean, okay? And we do have more interpretation for the expectation in the textbook. You can read it, okay? You can read it. Now let's repeat this example, okay? A graph of the of the probability mass function of the random variable. This random variable x represents the sum of two dice, right? 
the sum of two dice when you're rolling two dice. And of course, the possible values for the random variable were starting from 2 and until 12. And the distribution, the probability distribution is given in this way. So we know when x equal 2, the probability is 1 over 36. And when the sum gives 7, the probability is 6 over 36. Right? So we can write, we can write the expectation, the ex expectation for this random variable. That is, that is the xi, right? xi times the PMF when the random variable equals to those xi. And for all the xi, right? My i starting from, you can write, we have totally, you can write the 2 to 12. Okay, 2 to 12. So which means your x2 is 2. Your x3 is 3. And until x12, right? Maybe it's easy to understand in this way. So that will be that will be the value sum is two times sum is two times one over thirty six plus three times the probability two over thirty six right and then four times three over thirty six and then plus we can do that right we can check from the graph so that is five times four over thirty six. 6 times 5 over 36, 7 times 7 times 6 over 36, and until the last one, okay, until the last one, which is 12 times. And of course, this is unequal probability, right? This case is unequal probability. That will be the weighted average. You should write the former, okay? For the expectation, we are not only doing the number calculation, okay? We are not doing only the number calculation. Try to try to write it, okay? You calculate the final answer, okay? You calculate the final answer. Try to write the formula of the expectation and then do the number calculations here, okay? So that will be all I discussed the examples about the expected values or expectations. And it's very short, it's very short uh, sections in the textbook. When we study the more distribution of discrete random variable and the continuous random variable, the, the distribution we have heard before, the normal distribution belongs to the continuous random variable. We can also discuss its expectation and variance. And actually, expectation and variance, they are, they are two basic and important uh, characteristic, okay, measurement, measurement characteristic to, to describe, okay, to describe for any either discrete or uh, continuous distributions. So that will be, that will be all the uh, lectures I will give for the first eight weeks. And... Uh, let me review the homework, okay? Let me review the homework. And I have already grade homework one, right? Homework one. First question, okay? First question. A system is composed. Uh, let me let me just show my solution also. Okay, show my solution. Mm. I will go through very quick. Okay, very quick. Can I write here? Can I also mark here? No. All right, so a system is composed of five components, each of which is either working or failed. Consider an experiment 
that consist of observing the status of each component and let the outcomes of the experiment be given by the vector x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, where xi is equal to 1 if component i is working and is equal to 0 if component i is failed. Part A. How many outcomes are in the sample space of this experiment? This is pretty easy, no problem, right? Uh, each, each variable xi can take two values, right? So 2 times 2 times 2, the principle, uh, what is that called? The counting principle, right? Counting principle. 2, 2, 5. 2, 2, 5, 32, right? 32 different outcomes in the sample space. Part B. Suppose that the system will work if component 1 and 2 are both working, or if component 3 and 4 are both working, or if component 1, 2, 3 are all working. Let W be the event that the system will work. Specify all the outcomes in W. So, so here we should list all those, but there might be some overlap. Okay, There might be some overlap. For example, here. Uh, the, the answer should be 15, okay? The answer should be 15. Some of you only give me two or three. This means, the, the, this means component one and two both working, and we don't care about component three and four and five. So component, so first, first here should be the, for component 1 and 2, it should be 1, 1, but we don't know x3, x4, and x5. So actually, we will have 8, okay? We will have 8 different outcomes because x3, x5, x3, x4, x5, they can take different values, okay? They can take either 0 or 1. So that is for uh, number one and number two both working. And for number three and number four both working. So that might be that would be x1, x2, and three should be one, right? Three should be one. Four is also one. Then x5. Right? So we can have we can have also eight, right? X1, x2, x5, they can have different you either choose zero or one so we can have eight different combinations or one three five is working one three five is working so x2 one x4 then five is one right so here x2 and x5 uh x2 and x4 we can have uh four different combinations but but if you write, think about this one, one, if it's all working, if all those components are working, how about this case? This case is included in all those three, right? Think about if all the components are working, that is, that is included for this case, for this case and for this case. So they might have the overlap. You should list all of those. Here is eight. Here is also eight different combinations. Here is four, but we might have some overlap, okay? So that is the solution I write here, okay? I write here. I, I list all those, but finally I only found 15 different outcomes, okay? I can share the this solution file later, okay? Later in the group. I just explain those a little bit. Let A be the event that the component four and five are both failed. How many outcomes are contained in the event A? So component four and five are, oh, this is easy, right? This is easy. So x4 and x5 are zero, are both zero. So eight, right? x1, x2, x3, we have two, 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 three, right? Two, two, three, some of you just write two plus two plus two equals eight. Is that true? Its counting principles should be multiplication. How can you write? How can you make this simple mistake? Some of you write in this way, okay? So that is eight, eight different outcomes in event A. 
Then for event W, we have 15. We are going to write the intersection, right? Intersection of those two, which means the comma outcomes included both in A and W should be two. Okay. Some of you made a mistake in part B. Some of you made a mistake in part B. Then you will still make a mistake in part D when you take the intersection. Okay. When you take the intersection. So that is the first question. Second one, this is about the poker, okay, poker, I think most of you get, it is assumed that uh, each poker will choose five, right, will choose five cards out of 52, and they are equally likely. What is the probability of being dealt with a flash? So flash means a hand is said to be a flash. If all of the five cards are the same shoot, okay, let me check the question and explain. So for this one, you can just write your answers as the as those combinations, okay? Combinations. But some of you write a fraction, like four divided by one, four divided by a uh, thirteen divided by five. That is not the notation, okay? That is not the notation. With the right mark, let me just use a slide here. Okay, slide here. So trying to make your make your notation as a standard way. Okay, a standard way. Oh, I can use I can use this one. So for the notation, okay, for the notation. According to our textbook, it's four children one. We use it this way, and some of you write in this in this method, uh, four choose one or one choose four. What is the notation you use? It's okay, okay. We we have already seen this notation in the in the Chinese textbook. Some of you write. In this one, I think it should be choose one from four. Okay, this is okay. But some of you just write in this way. We have never seen any combination in this way. Okay, in this way, this is okay. This is okay. But this fraction, this just means a fraction four over one. So some of you write in this way, then it's all wrong. Okay, we didn't understand your notation. And this is just a fraction we, we read it commonly from mathematics. So be careful, okay? A lot of you use the combination this way. Now, a flash, which means uh, five cards are from the same shoot. So five cards are from the same shoot. You can you can specify the you can specify the which shoot you will choose, right? Which shoot you will choose. So it's four choose one, right? Four choose one, uh, four shoot, four different shoot. And for each shoot, for each shoot, we have 13 cards. So 13 choose five and over the total, right? Over the total, uh, 50 choose five, that is easy. And then part B, one pair, one pair, with, which means the other three cards are different, okay? The other three cards are different from this number of the pair. So one pair, we need to decide which shoot you choose for the pair, okay? Like the spade, heart, diamond, cube, right? So 13 choose one. You, you, sorry, 13 choose one mean, means the number, okay? 13 choose one means the, means the number you will choose to form a pair. So maybe one, two, three, uh, S, two, three, until, until 10, jack, queen, king, like those, 13 choose one. And then, you decided the point, you decided the number for the card, but you need to choose any two to form a pair out of four shoot, right? You can choose, for example, if you decided jack, you need to choose four shoot for the jack, right? So it's four choose, four choose two. And then how can we form the other three cards? The other three cards will be the other 12 point we left, right? 
12 choose 3. And for those three cards, you can have different shoot. Each one you have different shoot. That's why we have 4Q, right? 4Q. So that is the final answer. Part C, two pairs. Two pairs is similar, right? Two pairs. So in the shoot, you choose two. With uh, For the point, you choose two, right? To form the pair. And then, and then for each pair, you decided what is the shoot we choose. So we have four two. 4 choose 2, 4 choose 2. And besides those two pairs, we have one card left. So it will be 11. 11 choose 1. And for this one card, we have the shoot to, to decide it. So it's 4 choose 1. And over the denominator, right? Over the denominator. Part D, 3 of a can. 3 of a can means this A, 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 B, C, right? The other two cards will be different. So again, you need to decide which number you choose for this can. 13 choose 1, right? You are going to choose 3 out of the 4 shoot. And then the other 2 card will be the other 12 point, right? 12 choose 2. And for those 2 card, B and C, you have the different shoot. Different shoot. 4 choose 1 times 4 choose 1, okay? And part E, 4 of a can. 4 of a can, you decided, you decided. Which point? 13 choose 1. And 4 choose 4. 4 of a can, which means you choose all the shoot for that point. Eh? And the other the other one card is 12 choose 1, and you decided the shoot. You should decide the point for the card and the shoot for the card to, to make the different combinations. Okay, That is the important part we should consider in this question. Question three is also easy, okay? It's also easy if you can figure out the if you can figure out the combinations. So two red three red, two blue, two green, that is easy, right? That is easy. So totally 46, 46 choose seven. And three uh, 12 choose three, thir uh, 16 choose two, 18 choose two, right? And the second one, second one, at least the two balls are withdrawn. So you can write two balls, three balls, until seven balls in that way, okay, to write your combination. Or you can use the complement. That means no red ball is chosen, or one red ball is chosen. No red ball, which means you choose seven from the blue and the green, right? One red ball is chosen. You choose one red ball from the 12. You choose the other six from the blue and the green. This is also easy. Okay, this is also easy. And C, part C, always draw balls at the same color. You might choose red ball, blue ball, green ball, then you add for each other. This is easy. Even D, even D, either exactly three red balls or exactly three blue balls are withdrawn. So you should express your event, okay? Even A, three red balls are withdrawn. So we don't care about the other four balls. Even B, three blue balls are withdrawn. We don't care about the other four balls. But it might be the event, three red ball, three blue ball plus one green ball, right? So that means even A and B, they do have the intersection, right? So when we count this one, this means all. Either or, so that will be the probability of the event A union B. But A intersect B, we do have the intersection, so we should subtract the intersection part, okay? Figure out the probability, the, the combinations for each event, then that will be easy, okay? That will be easy. Uh, number four, I think all the students get it, okay? All the students get it. It's pretty easy to just... Uh, Use the use the set um, the set laws okay set laws to work out the event number five number five read the question carefully use Venn diagram okay use Venn diagram here I just prove it okay I just prove it I think most of you did it and uh, Ravo did it in a, in a, in a good way I can share his photo in the group. Okay, Ravo did the hand, draw, hand drawing in the perfect way. And it's pretty easy to get the first one, okay, get the first one. 
and some of the students which are very good they they use the dem they use the Venn diagram to to prove those and also they showed me in the algebraic way okay so this one uses the De Morgan's law but some of you when you draw the graph uh, when you draw the Venn diagram it's a mistake okay it's a mistake some of you just show me E union F this is E union F where is your sample space this is wrong where is your sample space when you draw the event in the Venn diagram you don't mention the sample space what is E union F E union F is based on the sample space if you didn't draw this box then that is wrong okay some of you are doing like this this is wrong okay or e intersect they draw e e and f in this way e and f in this way intersection where is your sample space if you don't have any sample space how can we talk about the event e intersect f should be based on the sample space then you can show in this one okay you can show in this way that's why i remove some points okay i remove some points e and f okay i can share the solutions in the in the which are group okay in the which are group then you can check it carefully and also the homework two is due this saturday right this saturday 6 p.m try to submit before the deadline okay the deadline and i strongly suggest you submit submit two hours before the deadline okay two hours before the deadline if you contact me after the deadline i'm not available okay i'm not available then it's zero okay it's zero if you get any problem to submit your homework through the rain classroom you should contact me before the deadline okay before the deadline after the deadline if you couldn't submit your homework to the rain classroom then it's zero okay then homework score is zero and you can also ask me questions before the deadline okay before the deadline oh i haven't stopped let me stop the screen okay let me stop